Welcome back. I am Cal Kulitz reporting live from the Inja compound. The Inja is inside his house currently preparing to work on his 2008 Mercedes SL 550. Reports say he plans to have it running and driving today, but he has, and I quote, no freaking clue what's wrong with the car. There is a strong military presence here today because he does not want, and I quote, the news media entering my house. We were informed earlier this morning by our credible sources that the Inja was able to repair the audio system on his SL550, but this video he plans to repair the throttle problem he is facing. I was also recently informed earlier this morning that there will be no media coverage of this event. The Inja has agreed to license footage to us for $5,000 per clip. We licensed 85 out of the 210 clips to show you the story. Let's take a look. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. What? Freaking news media is back. Can you guys leave? Can you guys go? I don't freaking care. I, it's it's 5,000 per clip. Just go, I'll send you the footage. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're just working on my SL550 here. I'm very excited to get this thing running. It's a little dusty now that it's been sitting. So last video, you guys know, I pulled out all this wiring from the aftermarket sound system somebody had installed in this car previously, and I took all that crap out. I re-soldered all the wires from the back seat area, and the stock audio system works great. It was an upgraded Bose sound system, so I'm glad we got it working again. So today, you know I am diagnosing this throttle issue. I just wanted to take a break from it last video because I had been trying to figure it out and it was kind of stumping me. So I just want to, so I want to take a break, get my head around and we're back at it today. I'm going to also start today by putting this stuff back in the dash. I realized after the fact that this is a 2008 model and this screen actually just has some clips that kind of pop out as you pull it out. Um, the earlier models, this screen needed to have these two things taken off and take screws out of the top to pull it out. I'm not gonna bore you, I'm just gonna do a little wipe here. Check that out. So with that done, I'm actually going to reset the car system. I'm gonna disconnect the front battery and the rear battery and just let it sit for like 30 minutes and then reconnect it and then I'm gonna clear codes. I haven't cleared the audio gateway code yet. Um, so I'm going to reset the system, then I'm going to clear codes and see what it does. All right, it's been about 30 minutes and it's time to reconnect these batteries. Honestly, I don't like working with batteries that much. They always spark like crazy when they are plugged back in. Let's, I, I'm really hoping this... And again, this is a high-end Mercedes battery that actually has two positive terminals. Wow. All right, let's read and clear some codes. All right, very good news I just found. I just restarted the car and then restarted the diagnostic and it pulls up a couple codes. The top two are telling me the throttle pedal isn't reading anything. Number three is telling me that the left DRL, daytime running light, in the headlight unit is, is flickering, <laughs> which I already knew. Then looks like there's a mobile cell phone adapter with universal interface fault. But one thing I did find that was awesome is we no longer have an audio gateway fault. It's down here, audio gateway, no fault. Very excited. So the only thing that's left is the throttle and then that blinking daytime running light. This is the code I'm getting for the throttle pedal. It says check the potentiometer of component B37, accelerator pedal position sensor, Hall effect sensor one, short circuit to ground or open circuit P2122. And so I am going to trust this code that there is a fault somewhere in the throttle pedal wire. Um, so I'm gonna test it with the multimeter next and I'm gonna make sure that it's actually sending electricity. B37 is the component that's telling me it's out and you guys can see there it's zero instead of five volts. But you guys can see it does read the throttle angle. Uh, so I don't think the throttle position sensor is out. I think it is in fact just a pedal fault. And then drive authorization. Last video, I read drive authorization with the MB2 code reader, not this one. It's not nearly as good as the Autel. And it told me that drive authorization was no, whereas the Autel, it tells me the drive authorization authorization is fine. So I don't think I'm gonna need the key reprogrammed. I think whatever the Autel scanner is telling me is wrong is what's wrong. So I'm gonna just trust this thing and I'm gonna and I'm gonna see what it leads to. So I just pulled up the alternator live data. It's telling me a generator electrical fault, yes. Generator mechanical fault, yes. Well, I started the car and it no longer says there's an electrical or a mechanical fault. 
but it looks like it's reading just fine and it was putting out the right values of current, electrical current, when I tested it. So I, I don't think there is a issue with the alternator. I also did see that there was a fuel enrichment when I went back in the menu. I think adaptation data, on cold start it said that there is enrichment, cold start enrichment. So I think that was the white smoke that I was seeing is because it actually just makes it run a little rich just right off the bat on a cold start. Guys, I was just pumping iron over here and I was like in between sets, like I never do this by the way, I'm not trying to flex on you guys or anything, but like in between sets, I was trying to diagnose this throttle and guess what, dude? Guess what? This connector up there was on backwards. <laughs> It revs fine. This throttle pedal connector goes on both ways. It is the most ridiculous thing, but it goes on both ways. So someone had done this. It was not me. I put it on the same way that they had it, and it goes on the connector just fine. But I flipped it around. This thing clicked in finally, and it revs just fine. I was like, there's no way this is going to fix it. And then I jumped in. I started the car and gave it a huge old rev. <laughs> it was shooting smoke everywhere, but... Dude, it revs. I just had to flip the connector around. Oh my gosh. This, wow. I just had to flip a connector around. My goodness gracious, this car works fine, dude. Oh my gosh, that was the stupidest thing. Wow. I feel like the dumbest dude in the world right now. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna start it up and turn it on. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> that is so dumb. I'm going to just let it run for just a second here. But watch, I'm going to rev it right now. It works. Holy frick. Those revs go fast. I've never experienced that before. Wow. That is cool. That is so cool. See how much smoke is coming out. I can't see, but you guys can. The stock exhaust, I mean, it doesn't sound great, of course. It's a stock exhaust, but it does not sound awful. That is awesome. Dude, I cannot believe... <laughs> I cannot believe that. Dude. <laughs> It was a connector turned around wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get so many haters in the comments right now. <laughs> I'm gonna go ax her if she heard it revving. You wanna go for a drive in the Mercedes? What? You wanna go for a drive in the Mercedes? I need to get your genuine reaction. <laughs> what do you think? Let's take it for a test. Yeah? Dang that bumper though. We're gonna take this nice and slow, okay? We got like a quarter of a tank of gas. I'm gonna take this really slow. <laughs> nice and smooth though. Oh, nice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> yeah, dude, check it. That's why it took so long to get here because we had to turn around because the tire was flat. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. Look at that. All right, Lord Kurt thought this was pretty sweet. He is one of the, like, he's so invested in everything I do. He's such a good guy. But man, I'm so happy to have this thing on the road. I can't believe we're actually driving it tonight. I had no clue I would figure this out tonight. And that's just crazy. Oh, wow. 
I, I think that feels about like a Camaro. You probably, is that a pull up and I'm just like, but can you do this? And just like put the top back. <laughs> I still think that my little Camaro will beat Either this way thing. I win. Nah. All right, boys, it is a new day. I temporarily slapped this little light shroud back on right there on the bumper. But right now, I'm gonna pull this into the sunlight and I'm gonna put the top down for the first time as promised when I got this thing running and driving. I would see how the top worked, so let's do it. I still cannot believe that the problem was a reverse connector on the stupid thing. That is the dumbest thing. Oh, we're already lifted up. I definitely need the airlifting on this driveway. Oh, I'm so happy this thing's on the road, dude. It's <laughs> such a fun car, dude. I took it to Lord Kurtz last night, and uh, man, this thing this thing is a blast to drive. I, I literally can't wait to try this top-down thing right now. This is the first time I've ever seen it in the sunlight, like in this sunlight. I saw it at the salvage auction, but it was all cloudy that day. It got delivered at night, and since then it has been in the garage. This is the first time I'm seeing it in the sunlight. Oh my goodness, wow. The interior color did not look nearly as cool as when it's in the sunlight. And that bumper is looking really good. I still have to paint it, I still have to finish it, but that's coming next video. I mean like, I just wanted this thing on the road before I finished that up. Oh my goodness. Wow, I am just, and this white, oh my gosh, it looks so good in the sunlight. Oh my goodness, I might just have to keep this thing the stock color for a bit. Oh dude, because I want to wrap this too, I want to do something super fun with it, but my goodness that looks good. And a couple of you guys were hating on the lip spoiler I added, and I didn't want to buy a $200 trim piece just for that little part down there that looks the exact same, and I wrapped it in gloss carbon fiber. You can't even tell it's carbon fiber really, it just looks like a gloss black until you get really close to it, but fun fact, I really don't care what the haters think, so. guys here she is perfect working condition Mercedes SL 550 2008 with the AMG front end and personally my favorite model with the classic Mercedes front end but also the modern lines and some of the modern technology but I do need to address right off the bat how freaking stupid that throttle issue was and I was talking to Kurt last night he made a good point that the haters are probably already typing their comments that we did that intentionally to like create drama. But I hope you guys have been following the series enough to know that it actually was the problem and I didn't know it was the problem because those connectors go on both ways. And I was keeping it on the same way that it came with. I was assuming that it was the correct way because you know, it, it went on. And last night I kind of just went back to basics and I, you know, I was lifting weights and I was like, all right, let's just start with the wiring issue. And I was messing with that connector again last night and I turned it around the way it had never been before and it clicked in and I was like, right when I heard that click, I was like, oh my gosh, was that really the issue? Because I tore apart the, um, the intake, I took off the mass airflow sensor, I checked the throttle body, I checked everything that I could on this car to see why that stupid throttle was working. I started with the basics too, like I started with wiring and I checked that first. Like you guys saw that I took the whole dash apart and everything last video, trying to see if the wires, I could see anything broken and it all looked completely fine. And my initial reaction was everything looks fine and it should realistically be working and I was confused why it wasn't working. And I had been saying that the whole time that I thought it was something small. Like I did not think there was a big issue with this car at all. So it was taking me by a complete surprise that this thing was actually a bigger problem to solve than I realized. And the only reason I couldn't figure it out is because the throttle was connected wrong. <laughs> Huge shout out to the Germans who designed a throttle connector that you know, can go both ways. Like, you didn't think about like putting a tab on it or something, so like, yeah, anyway, I'm a little salty about that. But I honestly don't even feel stupid. Like, it was just one of those mistakes that's just so obvious that I just, that I really just didn't think about it. And when I was changing the throttle pedal out, 
um, I changed it to a new one. So I had the, it was a 50-50 chance that I put it in wrong or right. So, you, you know, when I took the old one out, I had a 50% chance to click it in and it would have been right. And I would have been like, oh, the throttle pedal solved the issue. But when I installed the new throttle pedal, it went on wrong again. So as promised, let me grab you guys a tripod and I'm gonna put the top down. I am gonna try it. Hopefully it works. <laughs> but we shall see. All right, let's do it. All right, I, I don't know why I'm so nervous, but I am. Oh boy, I'm really hoping this goes well. All right, let's, let's try this. I'm really hoping this works. All right, so it's up. Oh no, it's not going past this. Frick, no, <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> Retractable roof in operation, it says. Well, I'm trying to have it in operation. Am I doing something wrong? Oh! What? <laughs> Dude! What? What? <laughs> I've never had this experience before. Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> this is this is the most excited I've been for a while. This is amazing. And I know it's not like the top of the line car, but man, this model car hits my soul on a whole new level. This is insane. I just realized the radio was on, so all this is copyrighted. This is that's awesome. All right, let's try putting it back up really quick. I'm gonna put it halfway up and so I can do that thumbnail photo for you guys. That is the coolest thing in the world. Wow. Yeah, and you can stop it at any time. Look at that. Dude, what? <laughs> The engineering of this car is just so cool. I, oh, man, I cannot believe that this is my car. I cannot believe this is my car. This is insane. All right, let's finish putting that hard top down. Here we go, guys. <laughs> oh, what? So much going on right now. It's freaking cool. Wow. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching. This is amazing. But we do have a few more things to finish, of course. It's not done. All right, so let's take you guys on a quick drive. Sorry, I totally forgot to do this. Just something slow around the neighborhood. Slow around the neighborhood. Man, I am so pumped on this. I had never seen that before. That is crazy. All right, driving the SL550. I'm gonna take it nice and slow around this area, and then I'll give you guys actually a one hammer before this video ends. Man, what an experience, dude. This is more than I expected. Oh, tire pressure, frick, I forgot that one is low. <laughs> Never mind. Are you guys ready for this hammer? Let's do this. Holy frick, this thing picks up, dude. Oh, it is so much more than I expected. This thing is incredible. What a machine. What a machine. I am so happy with this thing. All right, well, that's gonna end it for this video. We'll fix some stuff next time, but I'll catch you guys then.